The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Car racing is the name of today's mystery game. It's been called everything from a sport to an art form. A racing driver has been compared to a ballet dancer, a musician, or a surgeon at the height of his challenge. Why is he in that driver's seat speeding around that track, defying death, brutally disciplining his every moment, his every movement? And what if the control should suddenly vanish from his hands? What if he suspects his own wife wishes him to fail. Mr. Gabriel, Paul wants me to stop racing, but I won't. I can't. I give you this small piece of jewelry, Betsy. A little mirror with silver bells around it. You wear it, it will protect you. Oh, Mr. G, it's beautiful. It was my mother's. She lived to a hundred years. This charm protects you from danger. When you race, it will keep you safe. At any speed? Any race? You have to do only one thing. Believe. Our mystery drama, The Frog Prince, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Lewis and stars Bob Caliban and Patricia Elliott. I shall return shortly with Act One. There must be a reason why auto racers are as much driven as driving. Many motives are given. Principally, man's need to compete, win and dare death. At the risk of playing psychologist, a role I really haven't studied, I would say that Paul and Betsy Ring, married, both racing enthusiasts, make the track their way of life because they love it. Mr. G, it's Paul. It's Paul. He's in second place. He's gaining on Art Beaver. Oh, could have fight now. Here comes the pass. Do you want to look through my binoculars? No, no, I can't look. Looks like Art Beaver's engine spat oil across the track, and that started skids and the pile up. When I'm behind that wheel, and the guy ahead of me starts to drift too far, it's all I can do to keep myself from shaking. I am never sure you drive because you like to, Betsy. Isn't one racer in the family enough? Well, I've made just as much money on the circuit as Paul has. Well, and don't you forget it. both race cars, Paul and I, but never the same event. Well, same day sometimes, but we decided, having a three-year-old son, if push came to shove and one of us didn't cross the finish line, Paulie would have at least one parent. This race, Paul came in first. But I knew the women wouldn't please him, so before he got to our trailer, I ducked out. I hate having to make it yellow flags all the way. You came in first, Paul. Uh, where's Betsy, Mr. Gabriel? She went for beer and coffee. i tell you something. The crowd didn't like it either. Five laps under the yellow. Well, I was a lap ahead. When I came around again, the ambulance was taking Charlie and Ken away. Next time around, they'd cleared up pretty much of everything except the oil. I sure had luck riding with me. Well, luck do nothing for you. I put sulfur, red pepper, and salt under your seat. They protect you. Mr. G, will you stop doing that? Good thing I had my helmet on. I might have started sneezing and I'd be in the hospital right now. Paul, 
is no joke. Okay, Mr. G. You, you protected me. Uh, we'll forget about my know-how as a racing driver. My control had nothing to do with it. Nobody had control if off beavers spill oil on the track. Well, anyway, uh, first is a first. The money's the same. You would have come in first if the green flag was up. You were going great. I thought so, too. She behaved like a Formula One. Beer and coffee for the women. Hi, darling. Mm, hi, Betsy. You okay? What do you mean? Me okay. Well, I know how these accidents hit you. Oh, that. So long as it's not you. Well, what do you hear about Charlie and the others? Word from the hospital is nothing's real bad. Oh. They'll all get well. That's good. In all remedies, the force of thought is most potent ingredient. Well, it's handy to have a doctor around, too, Mr. G, who knows how to set broken bones. <laughs> Betsy, uh, what are we, uh, going to do with our Mr. G, huh? He really thinks no one would win if he didn't put the hoodoo hex on us. <laughs> Seven devils will always ride with you, Paul. Oh, thanks. He's got his insurance. I've got mine. Betsy, forgive, old fella. Mouth speak faster than head think. <laughs> I give you this small piece of jewelry. Little mirror with bells around it. You wear it. It always protects you and your son. Oh, it's beautiful. But look, Paul. Yeah. It was my mother's. She lived to a hundred years. This charm will protect you from all danger. When you race, it will keep you safe. It's mesmerizing. When you look into the tiny little mirror there, all I can see is one eye at a time. That mirror repel demons. And the silver bells, they scare demons away. You wear it, Betsy. No harm come to you. At any speed? In any rate? All you have to do is believe. Mr. G, I'll say this. You are the best mechanic in the business, and I'm happy you're on our team, yeah, but... Thank you, Mr. Ring. But you are still a superstitious old mom. Mr. Gabriel, Paul is half-joking. Oh, I am not bothered. I don't want you or him in any smash-ups. Well, somebody's got to have them, I suppose, and I'll try to make it not me. <laughs> Your beer is getting warm, Paul. Oh, how's the coffee, Mr. G? Good. I finish up and get car into trailer. See you at the motel later. Strange sort of a guy, isn't he? The way he insisted on us calling him Mister. His granddaddy raced cars in France. The old Cajun. Well, I'm a three generation driver too. I guess we should feel honored that he's so open with us about his Bayou beliefs. Well, who's to say that our prayers for safety on the track are answered any more than his? Red pepper and mirror charms. Well, I'm glad you've never laughed about it. It fascinates me. And have you have you ever noticed his eyes, Paul? So knowing, so calm. Mm. His hands are pretty good too. Mm. <laughs> and he's always concerned about both of us and Polly. <laughs> I do love this crazy mirror and bell. I believe it's very old. Mirrors have always been used to chase away evil, and before that, shiny metal. But you know, I feel it's as good as anything. If you completely believe in something, perhaps you can force the hand of fate. You know, it might be that power really comes from the human mind. Oh, <laughs> too spooky. Oh, hey, the beers, hand me that opener. I want to toast the winner, my husband. <laughs> Go. I've been lying in bed wondering if you'd run out on me. Oh, sure. You know I'm always up early the morning after a race to get the newspapers. Paul, get up. It's nine o'clock. Oh, I feel beat and achy all over. You should see what they say about you. Oh. Hmm. The Star Herald. Got a picture of you, too. Oh, glad to hear it. No, you're not. You're not a bit interested. Oh, you keep the scrapbook, and someday Paulie will get a big kick out of how his ma and pa made enough money to send him through medical school. <laughs> hey, where is my son? I'd like to see him this morning. Well, you have to get up and get dressed to do that. 
parties with Kitty and Anne and their kids splashing around the motel swimming pool. Hey, I'd like to do that. Uh, are grown-ups allowed? Well, I don't see why not. You're paying for it. Well, okay. Uh, I'm on my feet. What's the word on uh, Charlie, Ken, and Bill? A lot. Well, so far, so good. I-, I thought we'd go by the hospital later and say hello. You see my bathing trunks? I hung them in the bathroom. Gotcha. Aren't you coming to the pool, Betsy? No. I want to get caught up on pasting these clippings in the scrapbook. I'm way behind in my scrapbook, and I want to get caught up on the Louisiana 500. The Louisiana 500? Oh, that's 13 days away. So? You're going to win that one, too, aren't you? Now, let's see. This one goes into the book first. Nevada Rally. Only 20 of the 49 starters make it through the first day. Paul Rings, escort, unbeatable. Seven straight win for Paul and Betsy Ring this year. NASCAR, Winston 500. Betsy Ring's racing career. <laughs> Can a woman champ driver be a mother and a winner? Uh, Mason Dixon 500. Paul and Betsy add Louisiana born Gabriel as new pit stop anchor. Gabriel is grandson of racing driver Gabriel, who drove 130 MPH to Dietrich in 1906 Grand Prix. Paul Ring takes his first Pocono 500 under yellow flag. 30,000 spectators witness five-car power. No fatality. Next stop for the ring, the Louisiana 500 in Baton Rouge. Good luck, Paul. I love you. around my neck. Where am I? You're in the Baton Rouge Hospital. Oh, I remember now. Or do I? You've been unconscious for two days. How are you feeling now, honey? Two days? I'd feel better if I knew how I cracked up. It's all blank. Did I... Miss a turn? Well, no one knows for sure yet. Oh. It's the worst it's ever been, isn't it? No, you're alive, sweetheart. That's all that matters. Yeah, but what about St. Pete and Lime Rock? Well, I've got Mr. G scouting around for another car. For what? I'll be out of commission a long time. Oh, I can't cancel those dates. One of us has got to keep trying for the perfect lap. That's the way we figured it, remember? One of us to be well enough to keep going. Well, who's going to take care of Polly? Well, I am, like I always do. Yeah. What about me? Oh, darling, you just lie there and get healed. And you do what the doctors tell you. What is the fascination we spectators have for auto racing? Is it because we see ourselves in the driver's seat with that daredevil? We root for him as we would for ourselves. We want to have that mastery, that control, to be that fearless, to come in first and take the prize money. 
That racing driver is us. He never loses. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. One more lap around the track to recount what happened to Betsy and Paul Ring, two married racing drivers and their three-year-old son. There's not a pro in the business who won't agree that the art of auto racing is that of complete control against great odds. There's no room for error. Ask Betsy Ring as she and mechanic Mr. Gabriel return to Louisiana after a 13-week tour of the tracks. You see, Mr. Gabriel, it's hard for me, brought up as I was, to always understand all this voodoo stuff. It it goes against everything I've been taught to believe in. Let's see, it needs belief. With it, voodoo, hoodoo works wonders. Without belief, it's helpless. Oh, when do you think we're going to get to Baton Rouge? Uh, Another hour. Oh, just one more hour? (laughs) Oh, you know, I've missed Paul so much. Every day I worry about him lying back in that hospital in traction. But when I called him last night, he was so cheery. Paul is like a son to me. You know that. So does he. His voice was up. He was asking questions. It was great to hear him like that. Because he is getting out of hospital today, yes. He'll be in the motel before we get there. Three whole months. It was his collarbone that took the longest to mend. Paul, he had bad luck. But all that changed now. Oh, are you sure? I hope so. His bad luck will change. Okay. So long as it doesn't get worse. <laughs> Two more hills, then the road she flattened out. Yeah. I suppose I'm babbling on because the closer we get to Baton Rouge, the more nervous I am. <laughs> what keeps haunting me is did they put Paul all together okay? It's best if you don't borrow trouble. Just think of seeing him like I think of seeing Mon Père, my father, and my brother. Mon Père, he is a wise old man. Very, very old. And his father? Oh, he was a racing driver in France, wasn't he? But his son, Mon Père, he never did that. He came to America, to Louisiana, to become farmer. Then I was born, and the racing fever... She'd begin all over again with me. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet the way you keep my mind off Paul's injuries. If Paul cannot race again, is it the end of the world? Won't be the end of mine. But Paul's world? Well, I don't know. I just want to sit here and look at you, Paul. That's all I want to do. <laughs> Isn't it silly? Yeah, I ought to hit the hay early tonight, darling. Hard to get used to the motel beds, and I got a big day tomorrow. I put Paul into bed, tucked him in, read him the frog print. Uh, he dropped off, just like that. He's grown so much since you've been away. Even in three months. You know, when I went into the hospital, he was just a... Little three-year-old, but now he's more like a real boy. He liked being on the road with his mommy. He took good care of her, too. Well, I guess old Mr. Gabriel did his bit also, didn't he? Hmm. Well, we'll talk about it some more tomorrow. Oh, I am real beat. Seeing you and Paul has made me realize how much I missed you. Paul... Paula, are, are you sure you're ready for a trial run in the morning? I mean, after all, maybe maybe I'll take a week or two of just walking around, you know? Paul? Darling? Hmm. Oh, good night, sweetheart. You sleep well. You have pleasant dreams. Darling, what is it? It's all right, darling. No, darling, you're just having 
you're having a bad dream. Oh. It's it's nothing. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. It's a... I'm sorry. It, it's always the same dream. Same race. I... Oh, how long am I going to do this? I... I thought when I came out of the hospital, I'd, I'd stop having them. You, you, you stop having what? Uh, nightmares? Uh, no, no, it, it isn't anything. You, you, oh, <laughs> the excitement probably of, uh, well, being here with you and Polly. It's, <laughs> oh, it's like old times. Well, darling, do you think you can get back to sleep now? Oh, yeah. Sure, I'll, I'll give it a try. <laughs> you just tell your dream machine. The red flag is out, and that the race with the hobgoblins is over. Finished. Period. Well, where in blazes is he? You know, it's six o'clock. What's the matter with Mr. G? I, I don't know, Paul. He said he'd be here at five, and he could get the racer ready alone. He promised. Well, it's after six. I want to get out in that track before the world and his brother takes practice laps. You know how crowded it gets here by seven. Well, something must have happened to him. Mr. G's never been this late. I would have called him, but he went off to his folks and they got no phone. What do you mean it's never happened before? Well, the last time he came down here to the Bayou country, he vanished. He becomes totally oblivious to what century we're living in, and he huddles with his family and Cajun friends, dispensing black bat oil and lady luck oil and I don't know what. Oh, well, I guess my own fault putting up with his hoodoo voodoo. Oh, come on. Let's get out of here. I'm not hanging around until the great Mr. Gabriel decides to show up. Paul, why are you being so unyielding? Because I know where he's gone and where he is. It's a two-day trek into that swampland where they all live and practice their rights. And I got to cool my heels until he decides to come back to civilization. Yeah, I just got here. I've been walking from the city two days. How you feel? How I look. You look old there. I am old. And I am sick. Now you will feel better. Now I am at home. Who knows? You're still working for racing people? Same now since I was here last. There. What is it from? The evil Loa. Jacques, bring the evil Loa from Haiti. Where is Jacques? He die. My brother die? His barn burned down. He inside. Nothing good come from Haiti. I tell Jacques. He marry Haitian girl. She come here with him. No good for him. But you, Pear, your sickness, very bad. I walk two steps, I fall down. Gabriel, you come at good time. Tonight, we hold service to imprison Eva Loa for ten years. In ten years, I be one hundred like your mother. I die then. But to bind the evil, to do that, someone in the family has to walk through hot coals. Jacques' wife, Christiane, will do it. She will walk through fire? She must. There, when did Jacques die? Three months last. On which day? Friday. First Friday in month. Why, you ask? It is the same day. Paul Ring almost killed himself in race. I want to help them, Pear. You must give me stronger powers. They're good people. First, you help your father and your sister-in-law. Vit, help me up. Jacques' brother, Gabriel. Hello, Gabriel. 
Christian. Go now, Christian. They will tell you when the fire is ready. I have never seen this before. When the evil Loa come from Haiti and visit your own family, he must be banished. You see, they are pouring much kerosene to fire. Then, Christian, she will walk through it. And the evil Loa, he will shrivel and disappear for ten years. She wears nothing on her feet. She will feel nothing. It has begun. She is stepping into the flames. Go look. Look hard. You see? Her face say nothing. She feel nothing. Christian is not fighting. There, I can't watch. She will burn to death. The evil Loa will burn. Christian will not. She is still walking. How many times must she go across the flames? Seven times seven will drive the evil away. Are you all right this morning? What do you mean? Well, honey, you had another one of those nightmares again. It's the second time since I came back. Oh, I'm sorry to wake you. Maybe we ought to get separate motel rooms. Oh, now, why do you say that? I'm concerned about you, Paul. I'm not criticizing you. And I'm concerned about waking little Polly. It's a beautiful day, honey. I've been up for hours. Now, won't you please get out of bed? I got surprised. What for? Why should I get out of bed, huh? I'm a racing driver with no wheel. Not anymore. That's the surprise. Mr. Gabriel came back late last night. He's been working on my car around the clock. Well, why didn't you say so? He didn't give me a chance. I tried it out at five this morning. It's ready for the master right now. Where are my clothes? Where you threw them three days ago. Did he have any explanation for not showing up before? Now, Paul, you go talk to him. I told him we were very upset. Betsy, I'm going to the track alone. I'm not having anyone there. In case. In case you fail? Huh. You will not. Paul, I'm happy to see you. You look fine. Thanks. She handled nice. Betsy, run with her a few laps. She do fine. Mr. Gabriel, don't you think you owe me an explanation? Yes, I do. I forgot what day you were going to test. I was so full of thoughts of seeing my father. I have no excuses. I have apologies. Well, that was a week ago. How long does it take to... Well, for you to get back to your homestead and back. We had evil to be rid of. My brother, he died. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, your father, was he all right? No, he was paralyzed in the leg. Well, what did the doctor say about your father? We ask no doctor. We need no doctor. We cured him. Are you saying you cured your father with voodoo? My sister-in-law, she walked through fire 49 times, 7 times 7, and pair. He is immediately healed. He walked two miles back to his house, like a young man. Unbelievable. Did did you say she walked through fire? Big fire. They burned big fire. And Christian drive out the evil lower. Do, do you want me to believe you burned this girl alive so your father could walk? Oh, Christian was not touched. She was in the fire for many minutes. And she came out. Nothing burned. Not even one blister. Stop that. A fire with a, a girl in it. I, I can't stand this. My head's spinning around. Let go of me. Let go. Fear of fire. Is racing driver Paul Ring reacting more violently to fire than most of us would? What of those who have not only mastered their panic, but can fan the flames 
to cleanse sickness and drive out devils. Can it be that fire is nothing to fear if you know what master you serve? If you know what to believe? I shall return shortly with Act Three. on the same continent. Common sense, as we know it, tells us one cannot touch flames without being burned. Common sense, as a philosopher would tell us, is but another term for general ignorance. Baptism of fire is often performed by voodoo priests and their disciples. Paul knows this. Yet why did he become so violent when he heard of it? Now you stop talking like that, Mr. Gabriel. I don't want to hear any more. Forgive me, Paul. If I have touched a raw nerve. Everything is ready for the test run. You can lapse the circuits for as long as you like. Why did you tell me that awful thing? What possessed you? I thought with you, I was always free to talk. I said it because it happened. But fire. Walking through fire. I'm sorry. I, oh, I don't feel so good. I, I don't think I can try out the racer today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Something's gone out of me. I should not have gone to visit my father. But when I got to our village, I learned much evil had descended on us. My brother Jacques had married and then been burned to death. Only his wife could drive out the evil. Do you mean a woman must burn to atone for evil? In our beliefs, she will not suffer. It's a lot for me to swallow. Paul never got back behind the wheel. He stayed in the motel, read books, wouldn't see anyone. Everything I thought we had was crumbling. I had to make a decision. Look, I'll, uh, I'll get myself together again. Just, just give me time. Honey, huh? I mean, there isn't any time. This is what I've done. I've taken everything out of the bank, paid the motel a month's rent in advance, put a couple of hundred in your wallet for food, and I'm... Well, I'm, I'm hitting the circuit. You're leaving? I have to work. I'm driving the trailer myself. I'll head north and see what I can take in. I got a few races lined up. Now, Paul, try to understand. I have to go. Okay. So go. If it's got something to do with your nightmares... Paul, you ought to get some help. It, it happens to some drivers, honey. In their dreams, they see accidents repeated that they've lived through. Now, maybe it's that. Oh. Anything else? When can I expect you back? In a month? Well, I don't know. Six weeks to two months. Paul, look, honey, while I'm away, will you do me a favor and yourself? Will you go to the hospital? Tell them the whole thing, the way you feel. Ask them if they can help you. Betsy, don't go. I'm scared. Well, I'm not. I can't wait any longer. I'm not giving it up because... Well, you don't know what you want to do. I'm not asking you to give it up. I'll be back, honey. Well, what's the hurry? Huh? A couple of more days won't matter. Because Kitty and Anna are heading north with Ken and Charlie, and if I need someone to watch over Polly while I'm working, they'll do it. Now, Paul, until you straighten yourself out, they're the only family I can count on. Goodbye. Well, honey, take care of yourself. Oh, hey, uh, wait a minute. Uh, you, you didn't pack these driving gloves. They're torn through. I got a new pair. I'll tell you what. You keep them to remember an old partnership by. Dear uh, uh, Elder, help me, someone. Someone, come, please. I can't drag her out alone. The fire's blowing hot. 
Look at it, please. The flames. The flames. Paul, Paul, let me in. Oh, my Lord. Paul! Oh, she's gone. Paul! Oh, she's gone. I, oh, I can't look at her. Paul. Paul, Paul, wake up. Wake up. Huh? Huh? What is it? What is that the fire you were yelling about? There's no fire here. Oh, oh, um, um, Mr. G- Gabriel. Oh, it was another of those nightmares, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Every time I see it, I, I see more. The same race, the same nightmare, but oh, more details. I, I see it. I s- smell it. I. Oh, oh, this is torture. I, am I glad you woke me up? I just find out. Betsy and the boy went north yesterday, and I think Paul is here alone. Maybe I come by early in the morning, and we have breakfast together. Oh, oh, Mr. G. Oh, I am your man. Look, I'll, uh, I'll have a quick shower, and out we go, huh? That, that diner across the street, he opens real early. Oh, how is it your fault, Paul? It takes time to get better. You're not ready to race. I couldn't make her understand that. It is not her fault either. She needs to race. She raced then. And what will you do? I don't know yet. And your little boy, is this right for him? Betsy used to read fairy stories to Polly before he went to sleep. One of his favorites was the Frog Prince. You see, Polly has known his father only as the Prince. I don't want to have him see me now as a frog. You never chucked a race. Mr. G, does it mean anything having that same dream over and over again? Yes, it must. Well, then, let me tell you. It's a race, see? I don't know where, somewhere on the Grand National Tour. I'm on the sidelines, and they start. Cars number 27 and 19 make the turn. There comes Betsy, trying to dive into the second spot. The green flag is falling. 19 cuts inside, you know, cutting off Betsy, and 18 and 22. 22 is crowding Betsy. And the next car tangles in there. It's a pileup. Front and back, she's getting smashed. Fire breaks out, and I see her trying to get out. She, she can't free herself. Nobody stops. I run to her. Flames everywhere. She's on fire. She's burning. You never told her this. No, I... I couldn't. Well, why give her a handicap she doesn't need? I talked to my father. Mon père. He could cast a spell. Oh, but I don't know where she is. Where she'll race. You have a photograph of her? Well, sure. Right here in my wallet. Give it to me. Do you have anything that she wears? Well, uh... Yeah, she threw an old pair of driving gloves at me when she checked out. They're back at the hotel. Give that to me. Does she still wear that mirror with the silver bells I gave her? Oh, she's never without it. That will help. But alone, it's not powerful enough. Paul, you give me $50, and I promise you Betsy will be protected. How much? If you want me to get to my father's in a hurry, I got to rent a jeep. Darling, well, I didn't expect you for weeks. Uh, well, I didn't expect to find you at the practice track. Well, I'm getting into shape. It's all coming back, isn't it? Well, I'm making myself do it. Oh, you don't know how happy it makes me that you're trying. Uh, honey, you remember that story you used to read to Polly mm-hmm. about the frog prince? Well, uh, this old frog is doing his darnest to turn himself into a prince again. <laughs> anyway, uh... Well, why are you here, huh? Well, it's something that scared me. I, I had to come back to tell you, so I flew in from Pine River this morning. Why? What happened? Well, honey, it, well, it was a race the day before yesterday. All yesterday I was shaking so I couldn't move. The day before there was a bad pile of, oh, a real bad thing, honey. Guys crushed a fire. It, it was awful. I was in seventh position. Coming around the turn, you, you can't see because those trees, remember? Yeah, yeah. They hide the corner. 
And then all of a sudden, the whole track is covered with smoke. And I was heading straight into them. Here, yeah, go on. Now, this is the scary part. A man ran out with a yellow flag, and he flagged me down. So I pulled way over on the inside, and I got clear. Well, did you find out who it was? The guy who saved you? I didn't see him again. I didn't want to. Why? Because it was you, Paul. I swear, you ran out on that track and stopped me. I would have burned to death if I'd hit the others. Mr. Gabriel, look who just came out to the track. Betsy. Oh, Mr. G, I thought you weren't working for us anymore. You sent me away, but Paul hired me right back. He's been down here most every day. Todd, he's working with us, too. Like old times. There is no money, but we believe in Paul. Are you coming back to make the team complete? Oh, I, I'm just here on a flying visit. I have to go say hello to Todd. Paul, don't you move. I'll be right back, honey. <laughs> she looks fine. Well, I don't know what to believe anymore. You know, I guess miracles do happen. Betsy was telling me she sure had a narrow escape. Mr. G, your daddy cast a very good spell. When did you see him? Last night. I brought Chief back this morning. He said to tell you he is all ready to go. He just wants to know when you want him to start his spell. doesn't seem to matter what your persuasion is, does it? So long as it's wholehearted. In the depths of Cajun country, incantations and strange powders and hot fires seem to produce miracles. But don't they happen every day to protect those who will it? Today we worship the science of the material. Tomorrow, what a vast knowledge might be ours if we accept the science of love. I shall return shortly. It's been said that there are three true sports. Mountain climbing, bullfighting, and motor racing. All the rest are recreations. No question, speedway racing infects the blood. When the voice at the track says, gentlemen, start your engines, hearts leap up, and the mystique of man against speed begins. Whether you're watching the rookie of the year or the champ of champions, these kings of the road have all decided that in this life, you take what you want, but you pay for it. Our cast included Bob Caliban, Patricia Elliott, and Gordon Heath. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. If I wanted to be a farmer, I could have stayed at home. But here, at least, you can be a wealthy farmer. Captain, no matter how old a man is, doesn't he still have the desire for gold? Soldier Alvarado, I have a desire, but not for gold. It's for something far more valuable. What could be more valuable than gold? You have it. I don't understand. Youth. The fire. The strength of youth. They speak of some... Some magic fountain. A fountain of youth. All one may do is bathe in it. And one is made young again. For that fountain, I would assemble a fleet of ships. To find that fountain, I would venture everything. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.